Hey everybody, this is John, uh, back from Salt Lake City. And so yesterday while I was driving to a meeting, I was at a stoplight, checking quotes, and it's like, oh my gosh, the I had a level on the NASDAQ here, on the NASDAQ futures, and essentially just a little a simple trend line here with the idea that if we break this trend line with the squeeze setting up, we have the potential to, I mean, to me, coming down to like 45, 25 would make sense. Now, is that a huge decline from here? Well, this is about 45, 75 from here, you know, moved here, that'd be about 50 points. And so the question on something like this is, well, okay, that's not a big deal. I mean, 50 points, I mean, you know, if we look at a weekly chart here, this is an uptrend, right? So what's the big deal? But I always just kind of look at it as like, well, if there's a setup that shows the potential for 50 points of downside of the NASDAQ, and you've got a bunch of long positions that are three weeks out, and you're just going to, you know, man up or woman up and hold through that pullback, that's great, but you don't have to. So I sent out and said, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm, I want to, you know, definitely keep my spreads in Google, but I'm going to short a couple of NASDAQ futures here. You could also buy some puts on the queues as a shorter term trade just to kind of hedge that position. So if we look at what this looks like here, then you can see that, I mean, the nice thing is with this Google trade is, you know, we bought these, I bought 20 of these calls, but did it as a diagonal. Okay, so sold these. And you can see here that, gosh, even though I'm, I'm down almost $8,000 on these 20 calls, I'm up $6,300 um, on these. So that takes the sting off of it. That's why you do diagonals so that when there is a pullback like this, because you don't know exactly when something's going to move, and it's not as a big of a deal. But at the same time, by using that 195 minute squeeze signal to short some NASDAQ futures, we can see here that that's bolstered um, bolstered to the point where net net this hedge position is positive. Okay, and again, that's just kind of the best of both worlds. But I I do like the idea in this market of kind of finding some strong stocks that tend to be bucking the trend, be willing to kind of hold on to them for a little bit. But in the meantime, when there's some shorter term nastiness, like there is right now. I mean, on the Nasdaq, there's squeezes on the 78 minute chart, the 195 minute chart, which just means that you know short term pressure. Now that could change on the next earnings announcement. That could change. On on the next, you know, the, the idea that maybe uh, Apple's gonna buy Puerto Rico, who knows? All we have to work with are the charts that are right in front of us and to try to second guess them is uh, an exercise in futility and uh, self-hatred. Okay, so for tomorrow, of course, Tesla after the bell earnings question. Now what's intriguing about this is that you've got 25% short interest so um, it wouldn't take much for an explosion to go higher. I think it makes sense to hold on to some cheap calls uh, through earnings. Yes, you're risking 100% of the premium. You have to you hold those calls with the assumption that it's not going to work, and then if it doesn't work, which has a high probability of not happening, then that loss is just an acceptable percentage of risk in your portfolio. But if it does work, it can be you know. You're risking 1% and make 5% or 10%. So to me, that makes sense. Um, I'll be doing the room tomorrow at the close, and we'll look at some more strategies there for Tesla. And then, of course, in the morning, uh, there's Priceline. And it would make sense. Gosh, if I could actually type the symbol in. It would make sense that it would go higher. I mean, you've actually got some nice, pretty bullish stuff here on the weekly chart. But also keep in mind that Expedia, which kind of has the same model, um, also did well. Okay, the only thing here with earnings is that if expectations weren't quite in line, uh, then it goes from there, all right? Okay, rolling into a very awesome class that Don is gonna be putting on. He's got a class he's gonna be doing this Saturday. Go to simpleroptions.com forward slash consistent, and it's gonna be called Consistent Trading Strategies and Setups. And you can see there's a Saturday class. And then if you kind of want to see where the rubber meets the road, there's an additional live trading component there. A very, very cool indicator that Don has been working with is the cumulative and comparative tick indicators. Okay, This is critical for gauging kind of market direction, market um, uh, conviction, so to speak. Okay, very, very cool way to read that. And especially with all the kind of short-term volatility we've been having, one day it's up, one day it's down, um, that's been a critical tool just engaging that. Um, reading and in anticipating market direction without looking at a chart, okay? And it's, again, more tools in your toolbox. And then what, what Don, Don brings in terms of his perspective, which is awesome, is this question right here. What really drives 
markets and order flow so you can read markets at any moment in time okay so the whole idea of basing market uh, facts and not opinions all right and from there don's gonna be talking about of course the awesome strategies of basic risk reward stuff um, i like this part where it's called trade logic and there's this the idea that trading logic is more important than your directional bias is critical because if you have a you know very strong directional bias that's going to override your trading logic and that doesn't work right must have traders checklist knowing the exact entry and exit criteria the simple tools you can use to analyze market conditions and how to interpret risk with one underutilized gauge so on something like this the whole idea is that it's taking a class and delivering enough value where you have the opportunity to go out and make that in the market in just a couple of trades. That's why it's priced 297. Um, I always think of it in terms of futures contracts. You know, that's just, hey, six points on the S on one S&P contract. But of course, a lot of this applies to options. So you can kind of extrapolate it from there. And then also, if you're interested in doing the real time trading part of it, as you guys know, I'm a big believer that if you learn something on a PowerPoint is one thing. But if you can practice putting it into practice, it's a whole completely different thing. And if you're interested in that, you can do the additional live trading. 497 and that's for both the, and the 497 includes the saturday okay hopefully that all made sense it's going to be an awesome class you guys have a great rest of the evening and trading day tomorrow and we'll see you at the next update